Morning. Hey. How you doing? Good. Good. Good morning. We went. All right, guys, good morning. We'll get started uh, so that we can get uh, get you guys uh, going on your stuff for today and also be able to uh, uh, help you with the, the wrapping up of the course itself. Hopefully, if you were uh, one of my AP Bio students, hopefully yesterday went well for you. I'm, I'm hopeful also uh, that at this point you're feeling a sense of relief that you are now done uh, with that testing, which can be pretty rigorous and difficult. My daughter did both AP US and AP Bio uh, this year and and uh, her feelings last night um, where where she wasn't having to grind content and get uh, get ready for a, a high stakes test um, is is something that's awfully nice to see. And so if you are in that AP biology group, um, I, my hope is that however you did yesterday and I'm hoping it's great, um, that relief of being done is a really good thing. So let me show you uh, just a, a couple things for today. Uh, make sure you take your attendance for today so that your attendance is taken care of. Um, and then I want to lay out for you how we wrap up this course, uh, because for us, we've got this week uh, where we'll still be doing new content. And then the remainder of the time is for us to cement in your grades and to make sure that things are good. Um, and, and we've been given directives by the, the district for how that should look. And so we want to make sure that you are, are safe and good uh, so that you are comfortable with, with uh, what, is, what is going on. First of all, uh, remember yesterday you had a, a summative short answer test that I assigned yesterday that's due today. Um, and so please make sure you get that finished up. That is your last test that we will be doing together um, as a class. Uh, there are no final exams. And so for, for you, your testing category is, is already uh, pretty much set in stone. Um, this is going to be the last points that will be added to that category. And so please make sure um, that you get that taken care of and you get that done. What we will be working on this week is taking a look at the last chapter we'll be working with from your textbook, which is chapter 29. And in chapter 29, they focus on the ideas of what happened in the 1980s. Um, and then what will be taking place is the remainder of the stuff uh, that we won't be getting to from the Clinton era forwards. Fortunately, you will be taking uh, government in 12th grade and economics in 12th grade. And both of those classes spend time taking a look at current pol modern politics and modern economics, which will help you to bridge uh, that area uh, from the George H.W. Bush time period forward. And so if you feel like you're missing out on content, 
Um, there are ways for us to fudge that. And if you would like uh, assistance getting that done, whether it's reading from your textbook uh, to find out about more modern times or else uh, if you want video assistance, just let me know, I'll be able to help you out. These text questions that you have right here, we'll be discussing each element of them. And so I'd like you to get lesson one done at least by tomorrow so that we can discuss it when you come uh, at that time. But what we're gonna find is during the 1980s, the idea of Republican and Democrat gets solidified. Up through the 1970s, we had a really weird thing going on uh, politically uh, to our minds. Back then it was, it was seen as normal. But one of the things I wanna remind you of is during the 1970s, we had uh, people who called themselves Democrats who ranged from the liberal Democrats that you learned about, like Lyndon Johnson's Great Society and the New Deal, um, ranging all the way to Southern Democrats, um, who from the time of Andrew Jackson were very conservative, both politically and rig religiously. They were very nervous about civil rights movements that were taking place. And the Republicans had the same. They had very liberal members of their party from the progressive times of Teddy Roosevelt and Taft, um, more moderate ones like Eisenhower and Nixon, and very conservative people um, who you saw back during the Gilded Age, the Roaring Twenties. Um, and we're going to find that during the 1980s, Ronald Reagan is going to help sort those parties out so that for Republicans, a modern Republican is very much going to be moving in a more conservative direction from the 1980s forward. And so to be a Republican nowadays would mean the idea of less taxes, less regulation, more like what you saw during the Roaring Twenties or the Gilded Age. Um, and those more moderate Republicans are going to be getting more and more the message that maybe this party is not for you. And for Democrats, um, they very much are gonna become more and more the party for liberals. Um, and many of those Southern Democrats who still stuck with the Democratic Party through the 1940s and 50s, um, like you saw them getting shaky in the 60s, by the 1980s, many of them are gonna realize that they're not Democrats anymore, they're Republicans. Now, one of the problems that you're gonna face in today's world then is in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, when you wanted to get stuff done, Democrats and Republicans could then work together because if you were a, a Democrat who was very much trying to pursue things like civil rights, when you study the civil rights movement as you move into your adult life, and especially as you move into college, one of the things that you'll realize is that the civil rights movement in the 1960s that we discussed for Lyndon Johnson only happened because you also had liberal Republicans like up in the New England areas like the Northeast um, who also agreed that civil rights should happen. So it was some Democrats, some Republicans voting for civil rights. On the other hand, when it came to slowing down the New Deal and slowing down the Great Society, it wasn't just Republicans who were doing that. It was also Southern Democrats who could work together in a bipartisan sort of way. If you've noticed now politically that it's really hard for us to get Democrats and Republicans to cooperate, it's because nowadays you really don't have moderate and liberal Democrats or moderate and uh, conservative Republicans um, who are covering huge amounts of territory with tons of overlap. Typically, if you're a Republican, you're conservative. Typically, if you're a Democrat, you're liberal. And for those two groups, since they're two different parties, trying to figure out who is going to have control of the government, compromise becomes a lot harder following the 1980s. Um, and that's the world that you're living in right now. So we're involved in a lot of political disputes where it seems like Republicans and Democrats don't just disagree, but they really don't like each other. And part of the reason why is because their ideology is now pretty fixed. And also they're trying to win elections and they win elections by pointing out how different the other side is and not by not working with them. So you're going to see when you read chapter 29, lesson one, where that's going to be really getting getting going. In the past 50 years, you'll be able to see where our modern Republican and Democratic parties are coming from. This text assignment is going to be what we're working on, on through the rest of the week. And I'll be highlighting for you connections that you should be able to see between the reading you're doing there and modern times. Because if you take a look at the Republican, Republican Party now, the guy that you're going to be reading about, Ronald Reagan, is very much their hero nowadays. And his most famous quote was, uh, government is not the solution to your problems, government is the problem. And so he's very much somebody who is gonna disagree with Lyndon Johnson, Franklin Roosevelt, and he's gonna very much contribute to the idea of, of where our modern politics are now heading. 
So as you work through this throughout the course of the week, I will have a turn in spot available for you on Schoology. This will be the last assignment that we're doing in class. And so I'll be talking you through that daily. Tomorrow when you come to class, we'll talk about uh, the next se section in chapter 29 to be able to help you through. But we also need to talk about what's going on with your grading process. So this was the announcement that was, the, that was put out by the district um, for what's gonna be happening with grading in our classes. The grades that you receive in this class will be one of four things. It will be either an A or a B or a P for passing if you're getting a C or a D in my class. And if you are at an NC at the end of our time together, you will be receiving an incomplete instead that will give you the opportunity to make up work in the fall to try to re-earn the credit that you were not able to earn this spring. What I would encourage you to do though, is we should do everything possible to avoid getting that incomplete because that it will be a huge hassle compared to just getting done with the class and being finished up. You should then determine where is your grade sitting currently and that should then guide you as far as what you're gonna be doing with work, especially since I have students in this class who are missing assignments. And that is the thing that's causing a huge massive impact on your grade. Now, what I'll be doing over the next few weeks is I'll be reaching out to kids who have NCs in class um, to talk through what are the strategies to be able to get that taken care of. I will also be looking through old work um, and current assignments, putting them into the gradebook so you have an accurate idea of what's going on with your grade. What I do need to warn you about is this, I do have students in this class who are cutting corners. And in particular, I've got students who are turning in work that is not authentically their own, but instead I've got kids who are going to the internet and cutting and pasting assignments. That is plagiarism. That is supposed to result in a referral to the office and consequences for you um, that are supposed to be pretty painful because we do not want to encourage academic dishonesty. And so for you, you are at home, you've got a few weeks to be able to work with. If you're missing work, actually do your work. You're going to be running your assignments through a plagiarism checker like you've been doing in the past. So if you're somebody who's like uh, wondering, maybe you got a zero on an assignment and you're wondering, why did that happen? I turned to that assignment. Ask yourself, did you copy and paste from the Internet? Most likely that got you a zero. And if that's something you'd like to explore more, we can talk about that to make sure that you're in a good spot, either through the chat function we have here or through email or through a Google Meet. I would encourage you then look through your grades, look through your assignments. If you know you've got stuff turned in, I will be working through the grade book today to try to get grades up to date. And I'll be doing so on a daily basis as we move forward. Uh, also keep in mind that getting stuff done on time will make your grades look better quicker than if you do it late. Because if you do stuff late, I have to plow through all of my old assignments to find the late assignment that you turned in, um, which can be kind of time, time consuming. So think about that for, for you guys, number one, your short answer assessment from yesterday is your last test and your test category is by far the most important uh, category inside your grade. Make sure that that is something that you get done so that you're able to see that positive benefit for your grad grade. You've got a, a text assignment that you'll be working on. If you wanna get that all knocked out early in the week, you can. I'll be talking you through connections that you should be noticing throughout the course of the week and then we'll be able to wrap up at that point and then for you guys, you should determine what are your chances of being able to move up a grade level because this is a chance to be able to build your GPA. If you're sitting close to the next grade level and you can improve your GPA by doing just a little bit more work right now while you're at self-quarantine anyways, that would be a really smart thing to do. So what I will do is I'll remain on here until everybody is gone. If you've got questions for me, great. But otherwise, you know the two things that are on your plate for this week. And then if you are missing assignments, you know the third thing you should be paying attention to, get those zeros fixed up to make your grade look as good as possible. Um, but otherwise, if you are good, I am also good. Enjoy the beautiful day outside and uh, get your work done. Um, and if you're one of my AP Bio kids, again, enjoy the relaxation that comes from being finished. Have a great day, guys.